That is my um, default EQ, uh, the Oxford uh, five band EQ with filters. You don't always want character. Sometimes you just want a go-to workhorse that's gonna do what it does and protect the character that you want. If my default EQ is something that is a bit colored, all my mixes are gonna be colored that way. Now, if I want that, that's fine, but I kind of want to draw the character that I chose in the studio, ideally. So the reason I like the Oxford EQ is that it's very clear, it's very neutral. It does its job well, um, but it doesn't interfere with the colour that I've got already. these days one of the great things of technology is that we can go and record remotely or in places that we didn't used to record. Now with that comes limitations in the recording space. The room might be really boxy or there might be a, a hum that you didn't hear in the studio, the monitor it wasn't set up properly, the monitoring wasn't correct. There might be fixes to be made to protect the character that you've got, protect the performance you've got and the Oxford stuff is great for that. Like the, the cue is you can get a really tight notch cue to remove problem frequencies. Um, and that I use quite a lot. You don't notice everything. And when I'm recording, producing or engineering, I like to move quickly. I'm very aware of the creative flow and trying not, again, trying to be neutral, trying not to get in the way of that. When somebody's ready to go, they are absolutely ready to go. They're not gonna be ready to go in the same way in 20 minutes. So get in record. If there's a problem and there's some noise, deal with it later because the performance they're going to give will never, ever, ever again be given. And you can't nudge that around in a dark room on your own trying to get this performance. It's coming. Capture it. Sort it out later. And yeah, I find the Oxford stuff pretty handy for that reason.